Good morning and welcome to Fellowship Church Online. My name is Ross, I'm the student pastor here at Fellowship Church. And hey, if you're a guest with us today, it's your first time watching, thank you so much for checking FC out. And if you're looking to get connected here, the best way to do that is by going to our website at fellowshipchurchct.com. And on there you'll find upcoming events like our summer camp uh, for our students as well as our vacation Bible camp for our kids and middle school students. Uh, you'll be able to see other events going on as well, be able to take next steps, find tons of information about our church, uh, watch past messages as well. And also we encourage you to fill out our connection card and you can find that by going to our website as well. And that's your go-to to get connected, to, to receive updates and announcements of all the things that are going on here at Fellowship Church. We want to say thank you to all of you who are so faithfully giving of your tithes and offerings to Fellowship Church. And really, your giving translates into life change, not just here locally and within our church, but also globally around the world through our missionaries, through the other organizations that we support as well. So we want to say thank you for your generosity. And if you're looking to give today, you can do so by going to our website and click on the Give button there. You can give through our app as well as giving by text to give by texting Fellowship CT to the number 77977. Again, thank you so much for worshiping God in this way through your finances. That's it for now. We hope that you enjoy today's service as we worship and continue our series in the book of Jonah.
Well, hey, church, I want to welcome those of you that maybe even this is the first time that you're joining us. And I want to say thank you for uh, being here. And I know that God's going to do some great things uh, through what you hear today as well. Well, we're in the middle of this series here called Jonah. And it's quite a fish story, if you were to ask me. And, you know, when it comes to fish stories, I don't really have many. I mean, I can count on one hand how many times I've gone fishing in my life. My daughter, on the other hand, she recently took a trip to Maine and she caught this. Can you believe the size of that fish? Now, I know some of you that are watching this right now, you're jealous because you'd rather be fishing. So we better dive into this improbable fish story today uh, before I lose you on this. And so uh, we, last week we started this series called Jonah. Jonah had run from God and now he had just been recently thrown overboard uh, because of him running from God and God has a plan for him even in the middle of an ocean, right? So John 1, 17, we pick this up. It says, now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and for three nights. Now, again, to grab the context of all of this, what you'd want to do is go back online, catch the first message of this series that we have at our website. And the long and the short of it, though, is that Jonah running from God and this is how God is pursuing him. Now, I want to ask you this question. Have you ever had a near drowning experience in your life? Uh, I had one of those when I was a kid. Uh, but one of them that has captivated me recently was just in the news just a couple of weeks ago. There was this cargo plane that crashed into the ocean just off the coast of Hawaii. In the middle of the night, this happened. And so they radioed for help. The Coast Guard sends their, you know, their helicopter out there and one of their cutters out there to be able to help. And they're trying to spot these two crew members in the middle of a vast ocean and they're holding on to just some cargo to survive. And so these guys are wearing night vision goggles. They're trying to find them out in the middle of this ocean. Eventually, the Coast Guard jumps from the helicopter into the ocean. They find these two men. They hoist them uh, to safety and bring them back to the hospital where they're recovering even to this day. And I just listen to this story, and I think about all the obstacles they had to face to be able to rescue these two guys out in the middle uh, of the ocean. Imagine what it felt like for those guys that were floating on the cargo as the cargo was beginning to sink um, before the Coast Guard appeared. They probably had these terrifying thoughts, you know, like, this is how I'm going to go out. This is, I'm going to be all alone in this darkness. I'm exhausted. I'm hanging on to this sinking cargo. And I can't imagine if they'll find me. Uh, will they even find me? And I just imagine the terror that these crew members must have felt prior to the rescue of the Coast Guard. And then I think about, about Jonah. Imagine Jonah being thrown off of this ship thousands of years ago, sinking in the middle of a storm, taking some of his last breaths, all out in the middle of a dark, dark ocean. Well, suddenly what we see in this event is not the Coast Guard coming to a rescue, but this great fish appears <laughs> out of nowhere and is not there to give him something to hold on to so he doesn't drown. No, this fish swallows him. Now, what a story this is. Talk about a fish story, right? So scholars are not sure what kind of fish this is. You know, we always say Jonah and the whale. We're not sure if it's a whale, but it's something like one. It's something, you know, bigger than a human that did this. But the point is God sent it. Now, some of you might be saying, okay, this sounds a little fairy taleish to me. I mean, could this possibly be true? Um, you know, that's a good question. That's a really good question. You know, many people who are followers of Jesus would say, yeah, it's true. It's a miracle. Um, you know, God can perform miracles. We saw Jesus perform multiple miracles uh, throughout his life. And all these miracles were recorded by eyewitnesses who saw these things. For instance, he turned water into wine. You know, we all know that's a long process. He did it immediately. He gave sight to a blind man who'd never seen before. He's fed thousands and thousands of people with just a small lunch. And he even raised people from the dead. And he raised from the dead after he died as well. 
You know, one of the eyewitnesses to all of these things was Peter, and he wrote to the church in 2 Peter 1, 16, he says, we're not making up clever stories when we told you about this powerful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're not making things up. We saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes. And then John said the same thing. He was a follower of Jesus. He was an eyewitness. He said, we proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have seen and whom we have heard. We've heard and seen him. We saw him with our own eyes. We touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. And so this same miracle working Jesus, here's what's important, acknowledged the validity of this ancient event. He actually talked about it, not as a fairy tale, but as a historical event. Matthew records this. He says, "For Jesus, these are Jesus' words. For as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man, he's talking about himself here, be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. In other words, Jesus is predicting his own death, burial, and resurrection. Now, you might struggle with miracles. You might say, look, I've never seen a miracle. I don't know about miracles, and you know, it seems like other people see them. So if you struggle with miracles, take a look at your own physiology alone, right? Because that could be considered a miracle. The fact of who you are and what's, what you are made up of. And we have all these different systems in our body that are really incredible at what they do. But let's just hone down to one. How about the circulatory system alone? Just that one there. Now think about this. Uh, you know, the medical professionals have found this out, that your circulatory system, these are incredible facts. So you have literally 60,000 miles of blood vessels in your body. 60,000 miles seems impossible. Maybe it's a miracle. It's incredible what, you know, how our bodies are created and, and what makes us up. Did you know that your blood travels 12,000 miles a day throughout your circulatory system? 12,000 miles. And researchers say that your heart beats 35 million times a year. 35 million. And in a lifetime, your heart will pump 1 million barrels of blood. That's enough to fill three super tankers. This is what's going on in your body alone. And so that's a miracle to me. And, and yeah, that's incredible science and all of that, but that is amazing about how we were created and with you know, the specificity and, and the incredible work in which God did and just created us as hum creating us as humans. So if, and here's the other thing I always tell people, if you believe the first few verses of the Bible where it says, in the beginning, God created all of this, well, then anything can happen. The rest of all this can happen. And if he can do all that, and he can certainly arrange for a fish to swallow up one of his priceless children, the prophet Jonah. But here's the point. Whether you believe this is a historical event or whether you believe you know, it might just be a story. I don't want you to miss the lesson because it's an important one. And it's this, you can run from God, but you can never outrun God. You can run from God, but you can't outrun God. See, many think that Jonah was punished by being swallowed, right? But I want us to think about this differently. What happened to Jonah is that this fish came and swallowed him and saved his life. This is an incredible example of God. He's the God of second chances, not God of the second best. He's God of second chances, and he's the one who can pull this off. So it's an amazing story. It's an amazing event of God's love and his pursuit for all of us. So no, here's what's amazing. No matter what your past or your decisions have been, no matter what bad decisions you've made or stupid ones that you've made or ones that you regret, the truth of the matter is you can never outrun God. He's never going to stop pursuing you. He loves you that much. So Jonah's inside this fish for three days. So being in this fish for three days, I don't think it was particularly comfortable for him, but it also gave him a time to where he couldn't do anything else but to really reflect and to think and to pray and talk to God. You know, you may not have been swallowed by a miraculous fish, but have you ever found yourself kind of in a place that's kind of dark in your life where there's not a whole lot going on, where you're just kind of alone with your thoughts there and it gives you time to contemplate 
and to really consider, to pause a little bit in your life, and maybe even to, you find yourself connecting the dots of events and decisions that you made in the past, you know, leading to where your life is right now, and it's just like this clarifying moment in your life where you're just like, I gotta change some things. You know, I have to change how I even interact with God. I have to change how I view and see people. You know, or maybe you just have this moment of clarity where you see God's movement in your life and you're seeing his presence in your life and where it felt like maybe he was far away. You're like, no, he was really here. And you can recognize his love for you in some of the things that you're reflecting and thinking about. Those are big moments in your life. Those are incredible clarifying moments, but they usually happen kind of in the dark, you know, by yourself, a little bit of solitude, where all you have is time to consider, pray, and think. So while Jonah is in the belly of this whale, he writes a song by way of a prayer. It's really a prayer that he has, uh, and it's recorded in Jonah 2. Let's take a look at this. It says, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish. And he said, I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble, and he answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead, and Lord, you heard me. That sounds like rescue to me, right? You threw me into the ocean depths, and I sank down to the heart of the sea. Imagine what that felt like to him. The mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. And then I said, oh, Lord, you have driven me from your presence. You know, he's saying, I lost hope. I thought, I'm drowning. I'm going to die. Yet I will look once more towards your holy temple. I sank beneath the waves and the waters closed over me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I sank down to the very roots of the mountains. I was imprisoned in the earth whose gates locked shut forever. He said, man, I was by myself in despair, sinking to the bottom of the ocean. Have you ever been in a situation similar to that? You know, maybe not sinking to the bottom of the ocean, but some uh, some place in your life where you could write something like that from your own life experience. You know, the fact that you had lost all kinds of hope, that there didn't seem a way out or a way through, but then you recognize that God is still at work. See, here's the truth. God's at work all the time in your life, even in the dark. And here's another truth. He'll never leave you or forsake you. And this is what Jonah was learning. He didn't deserve God to rescue him. He didn't deserve to be rescued in in this situation. But instead, he, he, he recognized God's presence, that God is everywhere, and that he's always pursuing him out of love. See, aren't you glad that God listens to the desperate cries of desperate people who've created their own desperate circumstances? I know I am. See, God has not written you off. No matter what your past is, no matter what regrettable decisions you may have made, he still has a plan for you. He's not abandoned you. He loves you and he's with you. So when you feel all alone and isolated from everything, remember that God's arms are outstretched toward you and that he wants this vibrant, real relationship with you. In Psalm 69, we read, it says, I am in deep water, the psalmist says, and the floods overwhelm me. I'm exhausted from crying for help. My throat's parched. My eyes are swollen with weeping. I'm waiting for my God to help me. Help me, we would say, to see you, to trust that you see the things that I can't, that you're here even when I don't feel your presence. You know, he goes on to say, but you, O Lord, my God, you snatched me from the jaws of death. See, this prayer is not a prayer of saying, you know, God, you're, you know, what are you doing to me? This is a prayer of great gratitude. And here's what's important for us to understand too. See, God's not trying to pay Jonah back for his misdeeds. He's trying to bring him back. He's pursuing him. And so when, when he pursues you, he, he's not leaving you alone. He's doing uh, the same thing. God's not trying to pay you back. He's trying to bring you back when you make those regrettable decisions, when you find yourself running from God, he's not gonna just have you run from him and never pursue. He loves you. He wants this relationship with you. Well, Jonah goes on and he says this, as my life was slipping away, 
I remembered the Lord, and my earnest prayer went out to you in the holy temple. Right? We read this. And then he said this, those who worship false gods turn their backs on all of God's mercies. You know, that's an incredible statement. That, that is a deep statement right there. People that turn their backs, that run from God, they turn their backs on all of God's mercies. You know, if you spend your life in the worship of anything other than the one true God, you're going to miss out on so much. This is what Jonah would say to you. You're, you know, in pursuing the things that you think are most important, you're going to miss out on what's most important. You're going to miss out most of all on God's mercies that he shows to us every day. Could you use a little more mercy in your life, right? What are God's mercies, by the way? Well, I mean, there's a ton of them. There's, there's thousands of God's mercies, but some of them are his grace that he offers us in our brokenness, that we could screw up our lives. We could make bad decisions. We could hurt other people, but yet through his grace, he can bring healing, even in situations that, you know, they were really our fault. He offers that grace. He offers peace. He's merciful with his peace that we can experience from him. We can have this peace with him and from him that's deep within our souls, even though our circumstances might be a mess. He renews our mind. That's another mercy he shows us. He shows us our blind spots, reveals where we can make changes and adjustments in our life. Uh, where we can experience conviction for the wrong that we've done and say, wait a minute, I've got to turn a diff into a different direction right here. That's God's mercy to us. And never mind the physical mercies that we see every day, right? The sun, sun rises, the sun sets, the, the cool breeze on our face. I mean, whatever you want to call it, you know, the birds singing, there's tons of mercies that we don't really deserve because that's what mercy is. It's not receiving what we truly deserve. We don't deserve all of that goodness, we don't deserve God's, you know, God smiling on us and, and, and pursuing us. It's a mercy that he shows us. And we love that. We should just embrace that. But when we're running from him, it's hard for us to recognize that and see that. We miss all that. I mean, could you use a little bit of recognition of God's mercies to you today? I mean, you discover them. And here's the key. You discover them when you're resting in him, not running from him. It's hard to recognize stuff when you're just running and your heart's beating and you're, you know, you're just trying to get away. You see these things when you slow down a moment and you rest in him. See, too many, for too many people, that we live life at a fraction of how it was ever meant to be lived. You know, we miss out on recognizing his mercies and his goodness. We miss out on his miracles and his creativity. We've, some of us would say, I've never seen a miracle. We've never recognized one, maybe. We chase all these other things in life, don't we? Whether it's materialism, status, popularity, security, whatever it is, we chase all these things. And we give our lives to these things in hope of finding some type of acceptance, some type of purpose, some type of meaning. And you know where it leads? Let's be honest. If it leads to a lot of times to emptiness and a lot of cynicism and really a lot of ungratefulness. And that's where we're going to miss on God's mercies. These things that we chase, they can't transform us or love us or pursue us. They can't give us a bigger purpose. They can't fill us with power like God can. They can't give us eternal life, which God can do for us as well. We miss out on all of these mercies. You know, God spoke through the prophet Isaiah, and he was talking about those who chase anything other than God, these idols. And he says this, the poor deluded fool feeds on ashes, Ugh, right? He trusts something that can't help him at all, yet he cannot bring himself to ask, is this idol that I'm holding in my hand, is it a lie? Because that's what it is, right? Anything that we're chasing besides God really cannot fulfill us in the way that God can. So don't miss out on knowing and experiencing the one and only true and living God who loves you so much. Jonah goes on to write, for my salvation comes from the Lord alone. You know, Jonah would say, I might not get everything right, but I'm putting you first. That's what I know. It's my salvation is only coming from you, not anything else, not my clever tactics, not my strategy, none of that. It's only through you. And when we do this in our lives, it simplifies life dramatically for us. Life's already complex and hard. Let's get the main thing right. Let's put God first in our life and let's pursue him because he's pursuing us. And it brings hope and confidence to us. 
So when runners come home, they often realize that the things that they didn't want to give up stood in the way of a relationship that they never want to live without. It's a powerful time of realization. So maybe this week you can form a prayer of rescue yourselves, like, like Jonah did, or maybe a prayer of gratitude. Maybe you can do that right now. And maybe stop running so much and start resting. May God bless you this week. Thank you for joining us today for FC Online. We hope that you found today's service meaningful, that you connected with God on a deeper level, that your faith was challenged as well as encouraged. And hey, if you've been watching FC Online for a while now and you haven't made it out to one of our in-person services, we encourage you to join us next Sunday at either our 9 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. service because after both these services, we're gonna be handing out some free ice cream. And what this is is just like a neat way for us to create some moments of connection throughout the summer because it's been a while since we got to connect with people in person. So we wanna create these moments of connection and what better way to do that than over a nice free scoop of ice cream. And hey, who doesn't like free food as well? So we hope that you enjoy us next Sunday in person. And until then, uh, we hope that you have a great week. See you later.